Praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone. We're going? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. And it's good to be gathered together with um, saints of like precious faith. Amen. And where there's a um, kindred spirit, where the, the, there's a peace in the atmosphere because everyone's goal is the same. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? But it's nice when, you, when you're in company of believers. It's just a nice atmosphere. And you can just relax and you don't have to worry about anything. So let's just um, commit the service to the Lord um, this morning and invite him to be here. Heavenly Father, we're grateful once again to, be, to have this privilege to come and be gathered together to worship you, to give you praise and glory for the wonderful things that you've done in our lives. Amen. And we just thank you so much, Lord, for your um, care towards us for your grace, for your mercy, for your compassion. And we just want to invite you into our midst um, this morning. Lord, may you come down and meet with us. And um, Lord, change our lives. There's just things that you do in our lives, Lord, that, that mortal men or women can't do. Lord, there's, there's things that you even that you speak to us, Lord, that, that if someone else would say the same thing, it wouldn't mean much, Lord. But when you speak to us in a certain way, Lord, it means something to us, Lord, because we acknowledge that you're almighty God, Lord, and the, the, the things that you say are eternal, Lord, and when you say that you love us, it's not just a you love us today and not tomorrow, it's an eternal love, Lord, when you say you care for us, it's an eternal care, you don't go back on your word, Lord, you stick with your word and with your promises. So we just pray you'd come down here this morning, Lord, and speak to us. Bless um, Brother Ben as he brings the word. Lord, may, may he step aside and just let you minister this morning. Lord, as he always does, we're so appreciative, Lord, of, of having a, a man that's dedicated his life to you, to your service. Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful for all the different ones here that, that participate, Lord, and that have committed their lives to you, Lord, to further your kingdom. And um, we just pray you bless those that couldn't make it here this morning. And we just want to commit the service to your hands in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Uh, we're down one guitarist today. We've down Brother John. But it doesn't matter. We've brought in his replacement. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're excited about this morning. And we've got some, we've got some nice um, happy songs this morning that we're going to play. Um, I don't think they're children's songs. I think they're adult songs. Amen. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. Amen. I think adults have more burdens than kids, you know, than children. Children's burden is, you know, they didn't get a present when their brother got a present, you know. <laughs> adults' burdens are slightly heavier than those. So we've got a few of these. This is a little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Amen. And um, God's not dead. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's... um. Stand and sing this morning. I've written it in what it is. It's G. Yeah, the key's on there. Cast your burdens. Are we going? Yep. Now, some of these keys, we've just done it to accommodate our new muso, so it just is what it is. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden. Unto Jesus, for He cares for you. Higher, 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 Jesus, higher, 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 lift Jesus, higher, lower, lower. Stop, stop, stop. 
stop, stop. We're going to throw a curveball at our little mate this morning. We're going to go to sea. Follow me, man. You'll be fine. You ready? He'll be all right, eh? <laughs> okay, from the top. Just follow me. Cast your burdens if unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. I'm um. 
Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. Oh, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. One more time. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's not dead. Amen. He is alive. Yes, Amen. What's the next verse on this? Go again. Okay, yep, cool, cool. Yep, verse one. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. My feeling in my hand. I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my heart, I feel him in my soul, I feel him all over me. God's not dead, he is alive, God's not dead, he is alive, God's not dead, he is alive. Feeling in my feet, I feel it in my heart, I feel it in my soul, I feel it all over me. Oh, God, not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I feel it in. My hands, I feel him in my feet, I feel him in my heart, I feel him all over, I feel him all over me. One more time. Oh, God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like that song. <laughs> what a good song. Um, uh, we've got one more, but I'm going to change it. Bro. We're going to do some glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away. You'll be fine. Follow me. You know what? Anyway, yeah. Okay. Yeah, bring that one up. G. Okay. Some glad morning when this life is over. I Fly away to my home on God's face, you should fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. Fly away. I won't die. Hallelujah by and by. I'll fly away when the shadows of this life have closed. I'll 
highway Like a bird from prison buses I'll fly away I'll fly away Oh boy I'll fly away I won't die Hallelujah by and by I'll fly away Just a few more weary days And then I'll fly away To the land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll Fly away to my home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. I won't die. Hallelujah. Bye. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. I won't die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. One more time. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. I won't die. Hallelujah. By and by. I'll fly away. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to keep going, but you can have your seats. <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed that. That was a good fun. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Those are good songs. Man, they're all like, they're positive. I like positive Amen. confession songs. Amen. They're so good. Good for your soul. Brother Bradham said a positive, con- no, didn't he say an honest confession is good for the soul? Honest, yeah. Okay, let's make it positive as well. <laughs> um, okay, now we've got another new song. We've got a new song this morning. Um... Maybe we'll just do it through once, and then if you know it, you can join in and sing it. But Sister Christine's requested this one, so we'll, we'll do it. The musicians, I've given it to you on the um, on song, so just um, you can play along when you are confident knowing the song. Um, it's, can you bring it up, Brother Armand? Yeah, okay. Let's go through it. It's quite a nice. It's about, this is about going through things and realizing that Jesus is with you. I'm sailing over the stormy seas. The waves are crashing over and the daylight hides its face from me. Fear intrudes and the storm agrees, but I look and I see who's in the boat with me. Jesus, you're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. Chorus. Jesus is here. Waves, it's actually waves. You won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. All you tempest, you will all be still. Peace, be still. Because that's what happened when Jesus was there. There was nothing to fear, and he just said, peace be still, in the end of it all. And there was um, stillness. The, st- the storm was calmed, and all was still. And that's what happens when Jesus is here. But he's always here. <laughs> he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. They just didn't, but just because he was asleep in the boat, it didn't mean he wasn't there. 
gave a verse 1. Are we on this one here? It's a slow worship sort of song. Sailing over the stormy seas The waves are crashing over And the daylight hides its face from me Fear intrudes And the storm agrees But I look and I see Who's in the boat with me Jesus, you're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. You're here. You're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. There is nothing that I need to fear. Jesus is here. Wave, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you will all be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Verse 1. I'm sailing over the stormy waves are crashing over and the daylight hides its face from me fear intrudes and the storm agrees but i look and i see who's in the boat with me jesus you're here there is nothing that I need to fear. You're here. You're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. There is nothing that I need to fear. Jesus is here, waves you won't break me, storm you won't shake me, Jesus is here, oh ye tempest you will all be Stand up this morning and sing. Stand up. I'm sailing over the stormy sea. The waves are crashing over, and the daylight hides its face from me. Fear intrudes, and the storm agrees. But I look and I see. Boat with me, Jesus. You're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. You're here. 
you're here. There is nothing that I need to There is nothing that I need to fear. Jesus is here. Wave, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you will all be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Wave, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you will all be still. He Be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Just do it one more time from the top. I'm sailing over the stormy sea. The waves are crashing over. And the daylight hides his face from me. Fear in truth and the storm agrees. But I look and I see who's in the boat with me. Jesus, you're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. You're here. You're here. There is nothing that I need to fear. There is nothing that I need to Jesus is here. Wave, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you will all be still. He Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Amen. Beautiful. Wonderful Savior, I know for sure that all of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You 
you gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through I'm captured by your holy schooling, set me apart, I know you're drawing me to yourself, lead me Lord I
Guide me, lead me, walk beside me, I give my life to the Father's hand, I give my life. All I want to see 
is Him in me. All I want to see is Jesus shining through me. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, that's our great desire, Lord. All we want to see, Lord, we don't want to see ourselves. Lord, we don't want to see our culture or wherever we're from, Lord. We want to see you shine through us, Lord. Father, that we would get ourselves out of the way. Father, as your prophet said, the greatest gift anyone can have or a gift is just getting yourself out of the way and letting you live. And Father, I pray you would just grant that, Lord, in our lives, Lord. Especially when we're out, Lord, everyday life. Father, whatever we may be doing, Lord, at school or at our job or at home or Wherever it may be, Father, I pray you would live through us, Lord. You would shine out of us, Lord, to this dying world. Father, we just want to pray, Lord, for Sister Margie's workmate, Ruth, and her husband, Lord, how they've, Lord, they've lost their precious child. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them and comfort them. Father, they don't know you, but Lord, I just pray that they would, Lord, you would be the comforter to them today. Father, in the days ahead, Lord, in the quiet times, Lord, I pray. Father, may you be a strength and comfort to them and, and their workmates, Lord and Sister Margie. Father, I pray, may you grant it, Lord. Lord, we commit them into your hands, Lord. We don't know what else to do. Father, I pray you just go to them, Lord. You're a present help in time of trouble. Lord, you're our comfort. You're our strength, Lord. May you be that to them as well, dear God. And Father, may you just be with those who are traveling today. Lord, who are away, be their portion, Lord. Bring them safely home again. And may, Lord, I just pray, Father, you just come and speak to us like only you can. Lord, I think as Brother Isaac said, Lord, we hear a lot of voices in this world, but when we hear your voice, Lord, it's very different, Lord. And I pray that we'd, each and every one of us would hear your voice today. Father, may you just mold us and shape us into your image. Father, Lord, just lift our burdens, Lord, I pray. Father, give us courage to face tomorrow. Lord, may you anoint speaker and hearer one more time. We thank you we can be gathered together, Lord, and Lord, in your presence, and we welcome you here, Lord. Father, Lord, those who are here who don't know you, Lord, may they just open their hearts and Father, just Lord, may they give you just one second, Lord, to change their lives, Lord, I pray. And may you do it, I pray, for your glory. Dear Lord, and we just commit the service into your hands. Be glorified in everything said and done, we ask, please. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, musicians. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's good to be here today. Amen. Um, we just got one announcement. Um, we've got Brother Daniel Fryho preaching on Wednesday. Now, probably everyone says, well, uh, so that's a brother. He, so he ministers out of Brother Ron Peterson's church in Arizona, and he's in the country. You know, you know Sister Cherith Mounter? That's, that's, that's her dad. Oh, wow. They're in the country, and they're just down here for a couple of days, and they're here on a Wednesday. Amen. So if you can make it, I'd, I'd, I'd be here. Amen. He's very good ministry, very mature ministry. You know, so we'll be blessed. Yes. Amen. And so, yeah, so that's this Wednesday. Um, yeah, amen. So that's the only um, announcement. Um, if you'd like to take your Bibles and turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, and then we'll go to Isaiah chapter 9. And I just want to say that, you know, uh, so I came home last night after preparing, and Christine says, oh, Isaac's going to sing this song. And I say, basically, my, my whole sermon was in that song. Amen. But I had no idea he was going to sing it. God has a mind, you know. Amen. You know, it's not like, you know, you take like Brother, Brother John in the prayer meeting on Wednesday, singing in the Spirit. You know, a song came Amen. out that he never, not even conscious what he sung. Amen. You know, and sometimes we just sit there and these things just pass us by. Don't let it pass you by. Amen. God did something in our midst. Amen. 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 And we don't want to take it just for granted. Amen, so Isaiah, I mean, sorry, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then 
let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. So notice, have dominion, subdue it. Amen. Have dominion over it, subdue, subdue the creation. Um, and then Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. He says this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, uh, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. You may, you may be seated. I was also, yeah. Um, there's also another announcement I forgot. So a couple of months ago, uh, Christine went to the doctor and um, we were praying about what we should do because we were very time poor, you know, me working full time. And she was driving to the doctor. She said, Lord, May we get an answer from the doctor. She goes to a doctor that she's never, it's not a normal doctor. And um, so, you know, uh, basically, you know, the doctor said, well, you're, you know, you know, you're stressed, you're tired, you know. And then, and then, um, and then, and then the doctor said to her, well, he said, if you don't change what you're doing, she said, now, forgive me if I get this wrong, Christine's really the details person. But she said, the doctor basically said, if you don't change what you're doing in 10 years, you won't be here. And then this doctor said, what does your husband do? So describe me. Never met me before. I don't even know who this doctor is. And she said, if he doesn't change what he does, he's not going to be here in 10 years either. And he said, what you should do is he should quit his job, finish his job, focus, and then focus on the ministry, and then let Christine go back. And she said, you need to go back and do your healthcare assistant job because you love doing that. And then whatever, whatever doesn't make the... Uh, and then let the church make up what, what, what doesn't come in? Okay? No? Maybe I should let you tell the testimony. Sorry. But, but that's kind of the gist of it? Oh, dear. <laughs> that's basically the gist of it. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so for Christine, do the shifts to, to make up the gap that the church can't provide. Yeah? Yeah, oh, dear. I okay. didn't tell her any of the Yeah, so she didn't say this is what we're going through, this is what we're doing. So... La Friday was my last day, but I'm a, on a casual contract. I'm going back on Tuesday. But now I'm only working like a couple of days a week, maybe. Okay? And Christine is casual at the, at the hospital. Now, this is that because the intent that I am here in Wellington is not to work full-time at a job. Amen. But I'm happy to work. You must understand. I'm not doing this because I'm lazy. But the focus is the work of the Lord. Amen. Yeah? Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, honey bear, maybe I should have got you to say it. But, you know, so, I'm, so we're a lot more flexible. Okay? So we're, we're more available. Okay? Amen. That's what I want to be for, for everyone. Yeah. Amen. Yeah? yeah? So, yeah. Good to Christine, she knows the testimony. But, but that's basically the gist of it. Okay? So Amen. here we are. So, um, and basically it's neat because I'm on a casual uh, wage. I can basically earn the same I would in eight hours and six hours. So I just I was working six hours Tuesday and Friday, Lord willing. Anyway, so so that's that's what's happening. Well, that's what's happened. Because we because you can't do, you can't get a different result if you keep doing the same thing. Amen. Insanity is doing the same thing expecting something different. Yes. Amen. 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 Right. So you got to change things. That's right. Now. So we read there in Genesis chapter 1 that God, uh, that man was given dominion over the face of the earth, over everything, yep. and he was commanded to subdue it, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So have dominion. So man was called to, to subdue the creation, have dominion over it. And now we read there in Isaiah chapter 9 that you know, a very, very familiar scripture that for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, 
to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform us. So speaking of now, the son that is given, who is, we know is our Lord Jesus Christ, that his, his, his government will increase. I mean, his kingdom will expand. And this word son in the Old Testament, the word son, is actually, it means a builder of the family name. Amen. A builder of the family name. This is what it means in the Hebrew. And then, of course, it also means in the, in, in the widest sense of literal and figuratively a relationship, which is including a son, a grandson, a subject, a nation or something. But the main meaning of a son is the builder of a family name. And, you know... And, and the primary, primary root meaning of that in the Hebrew is to build. So a son is meant to build the family name or to build the kingdom. And, but we understand that, you know, God, God has to build us on something. I'm just going to, you know, let's just go to Matthew chapter 16. Forgive me if this goes a little bit slow in the beginning, but I want you to understand that we... We are not built on shifting sands. We are not built on man's ideas or man's opinion or popular opinion of the day or theology or culture or what the church thinks or what someone else thinks. But we're built on thus saith the Lord. I mean, we're built upon the revelation of who, of who Jesus is in his season. And I want you to see this in, in Matthew 16. Remember, Jesus, Jesus was to build the family name. He's the builder of the family name. So when God came in flesh... His, his purpose was to expand His dominion upon the earth, to take dominion back from Satan of creation. And not just take creation under His dominion, but to gather subjects to be built into the family of God. Yeah. I mean, because He's a builder and a builder, He constructs things. He, what, is, what is on a blueprint becomes material when He's finished. Amen. Amen. So God has a blueprint of His Word. Amen. We know that the works of God will finish from the foundation of the world. So even the New Testament, it was already done. And so God had a blueprint and he was going to build his people, rebuild his people according to the blueprint of his word. Amen. But he needs a builder to do the building. Because there's no good having the material and having the section and having the legal document that you can build without a builder. Amen. Amen. Because if you don't have that guy with the hammer and the expertise and the knowledge, your building is not going very far. Amen. Now, Matthew 16 and verse 13. I know this is very familiar, but I just want to read it. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, which is Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, pardon me, shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven so we understand that this 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 piece of scripture here that Jesus is not you know the whole conversation is on revelation he asks he, he says who do men say that I am so what has been revealed to everyone that I am remember Jesus looked like anyone else he wasn't like the cartoon Bible stories where he's six foot, blonde hair, pure white robe, you know, looks very different to everyone around him. He looked like everyone else. Isaiah 53 said that when we see him, there'll be nothing in him that we would desire him. So he wasn't even a great handsome fellow. I mean, but in him, he was God made flesh. And so, it, so he, they're asking, what has been revealed? And they was, and, and the people said, because they could see what they read about the prophets doing, they could see in the ministry of Jesus Christ because, of, because he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So what was poured out in portion, there was, you know, there was a lawgiver in Moses. And then there was, so there's a portion of Christ revealed in Moses. And all the way down through the prophets, it was, it was the part of God. Like if you take a three-sided um, 
you know, a piece of glass, you shine light through it, you get a rainbow. And it's the th same thing. The fullness of God here bodily is reflected, you know, you know refracted through the pyramid. Yeah. Amen. And then, and then a portion of that light, it's all split up. Yeah. Amen. So all of that was gathered. And the fullness of that now was in Christ. Amen. And that's why they say, well, you seem like Jeremiah. Or you seem, like, you, know, you seem to be like John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah. Or Elias or Jeremiah, so one of the prophets, because they could see what the prophets did, he did. But then he asked the question, but whom say ye that I am? Because he wanted them. He wanted, because you have to, remember, God is looking for a response. Right. Amen. He's looking for you to respond to his word. Amen. He doesn't want someone just to sit there and watch it all go by. He's wanting you to personally speak and reply to him. And that's what he was getting his disciples because he knew. He knew Peter would have had the, had the revelation, thou art the Christ. But he wanted it to come out of his lips. Amen. And that's why I asked the question, but who do you say that I am? Amen. And Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it. See, it's talking about revelation. It's not, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the rock he's speaking about is not Peter the man who would deny him three times, try and kill a guy with the sword. You know, when pressure came down, he denied him and all these things. And it's not even Jesus. But the, rev but the rock that the church is built upon is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. That is. That is the rock. Amen. Amen? That is the rock. But I want you to know, and it said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I wanted to get to this last Sunday, but I didn't have the time. Remember, because there was a promise given to Abraham yeah. and a promise given to Rebekah yeah. that thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. Amen. amen. So, so the people that are built upon the rock of who Jesus is, amen, they will possess the gates of their enemy because the gates of hell shall not prevail against amen. them. Amen. Hallelujah. So we... So, the church is built upon who Jesus is, Amen. not who Jesus was. That's right. Amen. Because even the Catholics acknowledge he died and rose again. Mm -hmm. Even historians, you go read the histories, they acknowledge Jesus was alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's just a historical God. Mm -hmm. And we understand what good does a historical God do to us? Mm -hmm. It doesn't do any good. Right. You can't get, you know, you know, as Brother Bram would make the saying, you cannot get warm next to a painted fire. The fire, it, may be, it may be more real and, you know, HD and all the whatever high definition picture it could ever be. But you can never get warm next to that thing. Amen. You can never get the effects of it if it's just a painted fire. Amen. And it's the same thing with the Bible. Amen. What good is it quoting about it just a historical God if he's not the same today? Amen. What good does it do? Amen. It just makes us a bunch of historians. Amen. We're not historians. Amen. I mean, God is not a God of history. He's a God of the present. Amen. He said... I, uh, he, you, know, you know, when Moses was speaking to him in the burning bush, Moses asked, asked this one in the pillar of fire in the burning bush, tell me what your name is that I can tell the elders of Israel who sent me. He says, I am that I am. Amen. He's the present God. Amen. And that's why the scripture says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the, um, but the sad thing is man is forever thanking God for what he did, looking forward for what he's going to do and missing what he's doing. But he, he's in the today part. We want to know what God is. Where is he today? Amen. 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 That's what we need to know. And so the question is now, and I put this very much on your lap, who do you say? Who do you say this is? Amen. Oh, Brother Branham, you're a prophet of God, Malachi 4. But who do you say when you look in the mirror for yourself and you look into the word for yourself and you see what God is doing among us, I ask you the question, who do you say this is? Amen. Amen. Who do you say this is? Amen. Because the word must put on flesh in every generation. Amen. And the word must be pressed, preached through a living vessel. Amen. It's, got to be, it's got to be lived out of a living vessel. Amen. Amen. It can't just be historical, but that same God must live in this generation Amen. as well. And that's why the question always comes upon us, who do you say this is? Is it, is it just a personality of a man or a group of people that are enthused about some doctrine? Amen. Who do you say it is? What caused Brother John to just sing in the spirit like that? Amen. Wasn't his own ability. He says, I don't even know what I sung. 
Don't let it go by you, young people, when God do, you know, does things like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we can just go, oh, he practiced that, now he sung it. No, he didn't even realize what he was doing. Amen. God took over a man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to see more of it. Amen. 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 However God wants to manifest himself, I say, God, you do it. Amen. Whatever Amen. you want to do. Amen. And so it's the revelation of who he is in this season. Amen. And, and the prophet tells us that Christ is put on bride form. Amen. He's veiled behind human skin in this generation. Amen. Amen. And I trust when you, you know, if you've met him, you're going to say, God is in me. Amen. Remember, Jesus said, I'll be with you even in you until the end of the world. Amen. I'll be with you even in you. What does that mean? If you've met him, he's in you. So you, if you had a cross section of your body and you'd go into another dimension, you'd see a pillar of fire in you. Amen. You'd see the same God that came down. That's why he came down the day of Pentecost. And it's not a painted fire to us, but he came down, that Logos light came down, separated himself into 120 people. Amen. Amen. Then the word went forth. What was happening? God was expanding his kingdom. Amen. God was taking out this, this, this world under dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. He was expanding his kingdom. And then the word went forth. And then the kingdom was expanded. Amen. I mean, people who were in chains of darkness, they saw glorious light. Amen. And they walked free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the revelation. Sure, we must know what God has done. Yep. That's right. But you cannot personally know a God of history. Amen. Even studying the science of the creation, it's a wonderful thing. I spent a lot of time in university studying creation <laughs> science, but it didn't help me meet the author of the word. Amen. Amen. Sure, it was helpful, but it didn't help me meet the author. But when I heard a voice on a tape one day, Amen, Amen and God came upon the scene. Amen. But I had to be willing to give myself. Amen. Amen. You've got to be willing. You can be convicted all the day long. You can know you're wrong deep down in your soul. But unless you're willing to give yourself over, right, just give yourself over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mercy. I'm afraid what someone will think of me. What is, who do we live before? Right. Oh, I'll ask you a question. Who do we live before? Do we live before our family? Who's our God? I just, I just, want, to, I just want to really put it down. Who's our God? Because the one you make your sub, your, yourself subject to ultimately, that's your God. Right. That's the God you serve. Amen. So is it your family? Or your culture, or the popular opinion of the day, right. or is it this? Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Just, you know, just, 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 just think about that. Oh, I love the Lord, but what are you bowing to? Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God I would bow to this. Amen. 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 Because he's not a mean father. He's not a cruel taskmaster. He doesn't beat you and wear you down, and you know, he's a loving God. Amen. All I've seen is love these last however many years. Hallelujah. All I've seen. Amen. And it's just got greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. So upon this rock, the spiritual revelation of who God is, who Jesus is. I'm going to read this from the rapture message. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. My Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. Upon this rock, the spiritual revelation of who God is who Jesus is. And here's the revelation of God. God made in flesh and revealed to the world. Yep. He was in the world. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, revealing what God was in a body of flesh. Thou art Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God. He said, flesh and blood never revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. Upon this rock I'll build my church. The revelation of the word in its season, which is who Jesus is, I'll build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 7. You know, we love to, maybe we should sing it a lot more. You know, we, you know, you know there's a song that the wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rain came down and the floods came up and the house stood firm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But let's, let's just read this. Because it's very interesting when you see, you see what, uh, because there's a reason as, as, as the word is ordered. So Jesus, he has a purpose of going from one parable to the next or one story to the next. Yeah, there's a reason why he spoke things in a certain order. Yeah. 
And so if we go to Matthew 7 and verse 21, look at this. And this is just before the parable that we're going to read, but there's a reason it's there. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We know the will of the Father is the word. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So he, he doesn't tell them you never did those things. Yep. So these are people who are anointed with the Spirit of God, doing miracles in his name, but yet they are workers of iniquity. Now, why is that? Because a worker of iniquity is someone who knows better but is not willing to change. Yeah. That's what a worker of iniquity is. Yeah. Amen. And I believe that none of us are in that category. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, look. So, so, and then he goes from there, then he goes there. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which, which built his house upon a rock. Let's just say that quickly. Remember, a worker of iniquity is someone who heareth the sayings of mine and doesn't do them. Yeah? So now he's making a contrast because here's a group of people we just read about who will be bitterly disappointed. But the word came their way. It's like even you read, you know, you, know, you make it such a simple illustration. Water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you take all the scriptures of baptism, you can see it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's very, very straightforward. Amen. But, yeah, there's, but there, there's ministers upon the earth that have read those things and heard about those things. But because they are not, they're afraid to do go against their church and against their denomination, they will keep quiet about it right. and they'll compromise on the word. That's right. Amen. So instead of staying with the truth, because remember, if you stand for God, God will stand for you. Amen. If you do not stand for God, God will not stand for you. Amen. He is only obligated to His Word. Amen. Amen. So if you stand upon His Word, He is obligated to you. Amen. You may not understand how the outcome works out, but He will stand. Job stood upon the Word of God in his Amen. day. Amen. Remember, he, he, he killed the sacrifice for himself and his family, and that sacrifice was God's provided way in that day. Amen. Amen. And he didn't understand what was going on. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't understand why he lost everything. He's covered in boils, head to toe. He lost his children. You know, he's on an ash heap. He didn't understand it. But he was standing upon that sacrifice that God ordained. He was standing upon the Word. And because, because he just stayed there, sure, he complained, you know, he did, but, and he didn't understand what was going on. But because he stood on that sacrifice, I'll put it that way, he stood on the Word, then God came down. And God revealed, him, God revealed himself in that trial in a greater way than Job ever knew him. Because he said, I've heard of thee, but now I see thee. And at the end of that trial, he says, now I know my Redeemer lives. He didn't know his Redeemer lived before that. He had no idea what the resurrection was all about. He says, you see a, you know, you see a tree, the autumn time, the, you know, the leaves fall off. It's, it's standing there with no leaves in the winter. And then the spring comes forth and the life comes back and... Sees a flower, you know, same thing, and the flower dies, drops a seed, and then the seed comes up in the next, you know, springtime, and this cycle over and over again. But he sees a man, he dies, where does he go? You read about the book of Job. He had no idea where it was, you know, you know, the hereafters. He had no idea. But through that trial, he said, now I know my Redeemer lives. And in this flesh, I'll see God, and I'll stand with him on that day. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he stood, he stood on the word. He did not move off what God had ordained. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And because he stood for God, God stood for him. Amen. 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 And that's why Job was considered a perfect man, as he said, as God said to Satan, because he took God at his word and he stood upon the word. Amen. 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 And it's the same thing with you and I. Remember, if he didn't, you know, if Job did not stand upon the word, I don't believe God would have stood for him. Okay, Brother Bram says, Job knew he wasn't righteous, but Job knew, was putting trust in the slain blood of that lamb, and that's what made him righteous. So he knew, you know, Job in his own ability, he knew he wasn't righteous. Yep, because he said, if there's only someone who could, who could 
lay hands on a sinful man and a holy God and basically reconcile them. Because he knew that he wasn't, you know, but he was righteous because he had confidence in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 And that's why now if you stand for God, if you remember, one with God is a majority. Amen. Amen. One with God is a majority. We don't trust in the flesh and blood we see around us, Amen. though it's encouraging. We put our confidence in God. Oh, yes, Lord. So then now, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I'll liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Amen. This world is falling apart. Amen. There's been another shooting in Germany. You know, these things have, have just become common. You know, people, they take their weapons, they, you know, they just gun down heaps of people. A few years ago, that would have been a great shock. Mm -hmm. But now, we just become numb to it. Mm -hmm. And people in Iraq are being butchered, and you know, all the, you know, Syria and all these terrible things going on. You know, and we can become numb to all these things. Mm -hmm. It's become almost common. Yeah. Right. It's become everyday event. Yeah. Amen. And, the world, and you see what's happening. Oh, you know, people get so caught up in the American elections. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. It doesn't matter who's in the office, they will fulfill what God has ordained them to do. Amen. Amen. And Russia's going to nuke the plate, you know, he's going to, it's prophesied to happen. He said in the last vision, he says, I saw, this is Brother Bram, 1933, I saw all of America just covered in smoke and craters. Amen. Amen. And it's going to happen because Russia's coming to her position. And all of, all of the West is playing Pokemon Go blinded to what's going on. I saw a headline, wasn't even a bunch of believers. They said that, that all of the world knows that America is going to be in a next major war except America. Because everyone's playing Pokemon Go, all caught up in all these things, blinded to what's going on. Amen. Thank God we're not blinded, friends. Because we would be in that same position if it wasn't for the grace of God. Amen. It's not him that willeth or runneth, but God that shows mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. So this world is falling apart and it will fall apart. It has to, it's been ordained to fall apart. Amen. Amen. But those who are built upon the rock, yes. amen. amen, of revelation of who Jesus Christ amen. is, they will never fall. The, you know, the storms of life may come. That's why it's such a victory. You see a house that's, that survived a great flood. You know, you're like, whoa, how did that survive? You know, what a tremendous thing. It's the same thing with a believer. You know, we're not fly-by-night people. In one day, out the next day. Come rain, hail, fire, persecution, hardship, division, whatever it may be. War, famine, strife. We're standing rugged. Because we're built upon a foundation. Amen. We know in whom we have believed. And it's not shifting sands of man. This, you know, as, as Peter said, we, these are not enticing words just of man's fables. Amen. This message is not just man, you know, enticing words and man's fables and things. These things really happen. Amen. And the evidence of it is you. Because normally, you know, if you go look at the history of denomination, there's a move of God with the founder. But then you just go one, two generations down the road and all they say is, look what our founder did. Amen. But you see in, the, see in this though, Brother Bram said, this will never denominate. And you can see that because we're not always looking, say, oh, what happened 50 years ago? We're saying, look what's happening today. Amen. Look what God is doing among us today. Amen. And that's the proof of the pudding is that God is the same in all generations. Amen. That we, don't, we haven't just gathered ourselves around a historical figure, but we've gathered ourselves to a living God. Amen. Amen. And so if you're built upon the rock, amen, doesn't matter what storms come and go, you know, there's that song, you know, don't build your house on the sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. You know, but it says, but build your house upon the rock, a good foundation, a solid spot. The storms may come and go, but what? The peace of God you will know. Amen. And that's exactly right. Amen. Now, 
If we go to the book of Deuteronomy 32, I just want to show you that, you know, Moses, and it's a few places, but I just wanted to take a few here, where he speaks of God being their rock. I mean, our God is a rock of, you know, he's a rock. And so, let's go to Deuteronomy 32. We're just going to skip down through this chapter just to save time. So Deuteronomy 32, 15. Say amen if you're there. Amen, amen. Okay, verse 15. You can read the whole chapter. No, sorry. Verse 1. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I'll speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the flower, uh, showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, and all His ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. Let's go to verse 15. He says, But Jeshurun, which is actually Israel, another name for Israel, waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. But He forsook God which made Him, and lightly esteemed the rock of His salvation. And let's just go to, down to verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And he's talking about, this is not a piece of masonry, a piece of stone. He's talking about a person. Mm. Amen. Mm. And then he says in verse 30, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? And verse 31. For their rock is now not our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. So he's saying that the people of Israel, their revelation is not our revelation. Amen? Their God is not our God. Do you understand? So our rock, remember, our rock is firm. Yep. We are not, we may be troubled on every side, but we don't forget in whom we have belief. Amen. We may have troubles all the day long, but we know in whom we have belief. Amen. And we know we are built on this foundation, this rock. Amen. Because the gates of hell, how do they prevail? Winds of false doctrine, formality, just having church, just, just having a church culture. That's how the gates of hell prevail against Christendom. Amen. But if you're built upon the rock, those who are built upon the rock, they want a living God. They're not satisfied with just what happened yesteryear, but they want Him to live today. Amen. Amen. They want more of Him. Yes. Do you not? Amen. Amen. And verse 37, And He shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? Yeah. yeah. And it goes all the way through the Bible. I just wanted to go there. Now, a rock, this word rock in the, what we read here in Deuteronomy, in the, in the Hebrew. It means properly a cliff or sharp rock as compressed. Generally a rock or boulder, but figuratively a refuge. Yep. Yeah. And our God is a refuge. Yep. Yeah. We can take, I trust you have, I take refuge in my rock. Amen. Amen. Because you know, you know, someone that it's been revealed to, you cannot get them out of it by an argument. Amen. A revelation becomes part of you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes very part of your being. It's not something that's learned and your mind changes. Mm-hmm. A revelation, you cannot deny a revelation. Yeah. Right. Amen. So in times of trouble, you can go to that as a refuge. Yeah. Because if God has revealed himself to you in the past, yes, amen. amen. If God has made himself real to you amen. and he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah then you can use that as a refuge because instead of turning to your own top two inches here, your brain or people around you only, you can turn to Him. Amen. Amen. In times of trouble, you can turn to Him. Hallelujah. Now, I want to... And then so David now, I just want to speak of a couple. He says this here. This is David in, in, in 2 Samuel 22. Yep, 
Everyone with me? Second Samuel 22. God is our rock. If that's all you get out of the service, praise the Lord. Amen. You gotta, you gotta know in whom you have belief, and you have to have confidence in whom you have belief. Amen. Amen. Because remember, the training, anyone's training, doesn't matter if it's military, police, paramedic, doctors, whatever, nurses, that is never put to the test when there's nothing going on. Yeah. It's when there's a time of crisis, then what has been <laughs> learnt and absorbed comes out. Amen. 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 You take like the SAS, you're the, you're the elite, you're a military. It's in times of great pressure when, when it's split-second decisions come, but it's a result of training they receive. Mm. Yeah. Amen. And it's like, it's like when, when like, I've never had to do military training, but, you know, those, 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 those new recruits, they begin to hate their sergeant major with a passion. They hate him because they drill, you know, you know he abuses them, he shouts at them, gets them up early, makes them do all these exercises, and they hate the guy. But then on the battlefield, they love him yeah. because they appreciate all the training that went in is actually saving their lives, and they love him. Yeah. yeah. Because it's on the battlefield, everything that they learnt now just comes out. Amen. So it's the same thing with us. It's, 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 in the, it's not in the easy times. I praise the Lord, I believe the message, I'm going in a rapture. It's in the hard times. Amen. That, that, that what God has, 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 has put into your soul, everything of that, it comes out in the hard times. Amen. Oh my, help us God. Hey, hey, I put myself, hey, I have hard times too. Yeah. We all have hard times. We have good times, we have hard times. Yeah. But the important thing is now, remember, a mountaintop experience is a good time. Yeah. Take, but when you go down and you find yourself in a valley, take the mountaintop experience to the valley. Amen. <coughs> Amen. So take the victory that you had take and take it down into the trial. Because yeah. it will help you in the valley. Yeah. But we understand that on a mountaintop, you don't grow fruit on a mountaintop. Hallelujah. It grows in the valley. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So oh, I'm going through a real blender of a, you know, a real hardship time. And then you'll come out of it. Mm. You'll say, thank you, Lord. I'm so glad I went through that. Because mm. mm. you can see what God has done for you. Yes, how he's molded and shaped your, your character. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And character is the only thing that you're going to take with you, by the way. Because mm. remember, death doesn't change you. It just changes your dwelling place. Mm. Remember when... When Samuel, when Saul went to the witch of Endor because he couldn't hear from God about should they fight the Philistines or what shall it be, he went to that witch and then the witch called up Samuel. He had a mantle upon him and he prophesied, this time tomorrow something you'll be where I am. In other words, he prophesied you're going to die in battle and he did. So here was someone called up from the other side and he was still Samuel. Amen. Amen. He was still, so death just changed his dwelling place. That's why if you love the Lord here, you'll love Him there. Amen. If people despise Him here, they'll despise Him there. Yeah. Isn't, you know. And so 2 Samuel 22 and verse 1. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hands of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in whom will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou saveth me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death come past me, the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Now you can read the whole chapter. But he's ascribing now, he says, my Lord is my rock. Now, I'm going to jump back to the very beginning of the service, and we'll come back to this. But remember, God told man, have dominion, subdue all the earth. Yep. And the increase of his government, there shall be no end, Isaiah chapter 9. So... I'm going to take later, but I'm going to come to this now. I'm going to take two characters in the Bible. I'm going to take David. I'm going to take Paul. Both of them expanded the borders of the kingdom. Yeah. One was a natural kingdom, David. The other was a spiritual kingdom, Paul. Right. Amen. So they were fulfilling God's commission in a way to take the earth under dominion. Yep. Yeah. But they both, so that was number one. But number two, they both knew God as their rock. Yeah. 
Now, I don't remember Paul ever saying that he's his rock, but you can see, but he was built. Remember, Jesus, when he's speaking to Peter, James, and John, the apostles, upon this rock, I'll build my church. He had in his mind, Paul's going to be built upon this rock. Because on the road to Damascus, he sees God come down, the great light shines upon him, and, and, God, and, and well, he, he was Saul at the time. He, you know, he speaks to this being, he says, Who are you, Lord? Right. And the voice speaks back, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Mm. You know, and, so, my, 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 my. and so he was built. And then what happened was, whatever came their way, remember, they were like the wise man that built their house upon the rock. Because they had storms. David had a lot of distress. Mm. He had a lot of hardship. Yeah. He was on the run for a long time from Saul. Mm. He had a lot of close, close run, you know, scrapes and things mm. where it could have gone this way or that way. But he had confidence that he was anointed by a prophet of God Amen. to be king. Yeah. And that was his refuge. Amen. Trust me, that was his refuge. Amen. Because it anchored in his heart, I'm going to be king of Israel. And so what does that mean? It means exactly what was said to him. You will be king over this nation, Amen. over these 12 tribes. Amen. But he was on the run. He was a fugitive in his own land. You know, all, all kinds of things. There's a time when he, when he had to flee to the land of the Philistines and, and act crazy in front of the king that the king wouldn't take his life. You know, there were, there were a lot of places like that in his life. But deep down in his soul, he knew I'm going to be king. And that's why he didn't kill Saul the two times he could have took, taken his life. Because he knew when God was ready yes. and when he was prepared, then David would be upon the throne. Yes. You understand? He had confidence that at the right time, at the right season, he would be on the throne. Amen. And that's why he was his rock. Yep. And it's the same thing with you and I, friends. Amen. You just have to have confidence at the right time. Amen. Remember, the scripture even says in the New Testament, and this is not verbatim, but it basically says the current state you're in, take it as the will of God for your life. Amen. That's what it says. Just be content in where you are. Amen. Amen. Because you, I trust you know, I know the rock. My God is a rock. Yeah. It doesn't matter where I am, what situation I'm in. This is where I'm meant to be. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Amen. So if you, have that, if you have that revelation, then it doesn't matter. Like, like we'll come to it later at the end. But Paul says, none of these things move me. Right. A lot of things tried to move him. A lot of things. Yeah. But he said, none of these things move me. Amen. Amen. He was a little man, but, but, but he could have said like David, my God, Jehovah, Jehovah's salvation, Jesus. Jesus means Jehovah's salvation. My God is my rock and I shall not be moved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I say these things because the same God back there is the same God today. Amen. 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 You don't just read these stories and say, oh, wouldn't it be neat to be like that? You've got to say, I am that person. Amen. I know the same God. I'm built on the same rock. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. it's, and he'd say in the Psalms, I'm just going to read this quickly, Psalms 89, 26. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Psalms 92 and 15. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Psalms 94 and 22. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. Amen. These are David's words. Amen. Amen. So he knew. He knew exactly. Amen. You know, it wasn't nice ideas to him. God became personal to David. Amen. 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 It said, when he was anointed by Samuel, said the Spirit of God was with him from that day on. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And he could always go back to that time. Yep. Mm. Amen. He could always go back to that time. Mm -hmm. And I trust you can always go back to a time mm -hmm. where the anointing, came, the anointing of the Word came upon you yep. and you're a different person from that day on. Amen. Now, as I said, a son, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump right back again. A son is a builder of the family name. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what the Hebrew word means, a son. Now, Paul would write in Ephesians chapter 3, and maybe let's just go there, if you don't mind. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. Hallelujah. It says this here. And you can read the whole thing, but I just want to take these scriptures. He says, 
Wait, let's go from verse 8. Unto me, who am less than least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which was from the beginning of the world, hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. And so Paul, Paul's, Paul's purpose was to build the kingdom, was for its borders to be expanded, because he was a builder of the family name. But it wasn't his name he was, he was putting forth, <laughs> but the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the whole purpose of him, of him going on his missionary journeys and things was that the kingdom would be expanded, that this creation would come under dominion again. Yeah. And now Genesis 1, we read it. He said to subdue it and have dominion over it. Okay? I trust now, I trust this all comes together. To have dominion, to subdue it and take dominion over it. Now, how did God, I just want to jump before that, how did God bring order out of chaos? Because you're ordained to have dominion over this earth. Amen. Amen. You're ordained to subdue it. Because by God telling them in the beginning to have dominion over it, to subdue it, they were actually told now, you, what does it mean to subdue something? You've actually got to take a hold of it. Yeah. You've got to put it in its place. Yeah. Amen. Right. You've actually got to have dominion over it. Yeah. So he told them this is what you have to do. But now, how did that, now how God did this is how man does this. Okay? So how did God bring order out of chaos in the creation? By speaking his word, he caused Eden to come out of darkness. Yeah? Remember, in the beginning, the world was out, form and void, darkness covered the face of the deep, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God began speaking. And then at the end, there was there was you know, there was Eden, there was paradise, there was a man and a woman in a garden. So everything was how it should be. But it was by him speaking, order came out of chaos. Yeah, that's right. yep. And you can see the world, I'm just going to go jump back to how the world's falling apart. They're trying to, they're, they're going to try and bring order out of this chaos that's happening. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Because in order to, to, to change something, to change a world order, there has to be there has to be a revolution or chaos to happen. Yeah. And then out of that chaos, they can bring something new. Yeah. It happens everywhere. You see the French Revolution. Chaos happened, and out of it came a republic. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The, you know, you know, the king of France would never have just said, now let's have a republic and, and gone somewhere else. Yeah. There had to be chaos, and now order came out of that chaos. Yeah. Right. And you can see the whole thing around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so he spoke now, and every part of creation was subject to God's spoken word in the beginning. Mm. Yeah? Mm. All of nature, this entire earth, was not one of it resisted or stopped what he said that would happen. He said, let there be light. There was light. Mm. Let the waters divide and let dry land come forth. All these things, Ex exactly what happened. Mm. Yeah? Mm. But now, so man before the fall had dominion over the creation by the spoken word. Yeah? Man had dominion because Adam was made in the image of God. Yep? 
So what God, what Adam did is because God did it before. You following me? It's like our children. You know, you know, you see anyone's kids, and you look at the parents and say, they're just like you. Yeah. Oh, they're so, you know, you're like, you see someone who's very gifted in, in art or music or whatever it is. It's normally in the parents. Mm-hmm. They're just like you because the ability is passed down. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh, your son's so good at sport. Well, look at the parents. Mm-hmm. It's normally in them. Mm-hmm. You've got a natural ability. Well, where'd that come from? The parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Adam's ability... To have dominion by the spoken word is because his father, God, had that same ability. Amen. Yep. Amen. Now, but then when when the fall came, in Genesis 3, verse 17, and this is God, and he says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth uh, to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Now he, said, he said, by the sweat of your brow you'll do these things. So by physical effort, this is how you're going to get food. Before the fall, it wasn't that way. Amen. Otherwise... Why would that be a curse? Mm. You understand? Mm. So beforehand, he operated in a very different way to after the fall. Yep. Mm. And so, Genesis, but, but you say, well, in Genesis 2, 5, it says there's no man to till the ground. And true, because man was spirit man. Mm. Yep. And then he was put in a fleshly body. Mm. Yep. And so, but I do not think it was physical strength that they would use to till the ground. Because before the, because otherwise it wouldn't have been part of the curse that would have been physical effort or sweat of the brow to bring forth food. Now, Amen. the second Adam reveals this. Because Jesus was called the second Adam. Yeah. And he did everything the first Adam did. Yeah. I'm just going to come to that now. God became... So... As I said, children get their nature and abilities from their parents or, or forebears. Yeah. yeah, but remember, there was no one before Adam. It was God, then Adam. So everything he received, his ability, his nature was from God. Yeah. 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 There wasn't something that was hidden in the family tree that suddenly sprung itself up because yeah. that was the family tree. Amen. Yep. Yeah. So children are an expression of the life that was in the Father. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the scripture says Christ is the image of the invisible God. Yep. Yeah. So God became flesh. Now remember, He is the second Adam, but I just want to get this as a, you know, a bit of background. God became one of us. You, you know, we know John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm. Yep. That. And the Word became flesh, verse 14, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So it says there very expressly that Jesus is not another person from God the Father. They're the same being. That's why when Jesus revealed himself to Thomas after the resurrection, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He's, he actually had the revelation. This is God, Jehovah God incarnate in a body. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. It's very simple. Yeah. He didn't say, you know, oh, my Lord. You know, he said, my Lord and my God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, but you see, God had to come down as man in order that we could understand him, but also so he could understand us. Yeah. yeah. So Brother Bram says, in Christ, the mystery of God revealed. He said the first thing that God wanted to do was reveal himself to the people. He couldn't do it as a great Jehovah God who covered all space, time, and eternity. He could not. He was too great to ever be revealed to people because it would be too mysterious. How could that great being that never did begin, that after you went beyond the cycle of hundreds of billions and trillions and trillions of years of light space and out into the infinite, into the eternity, and a great creature that was all that and still is. But what he wanted to do, um, he loved fatherhood, for he was a father. And the only way he could express it was to become a son of man. Yeah, because he couldn't express, you know, how can you 
Think of eternity. You know, you know, I remember when I was young, one of the first things I had in my mind is, who made God? But God do doesn't, no one made God, he's always been. What do you mean? You know, you can't fathom that, really. Even as an adult. Where's his beginning? He has no beginning. Where's his end? He has no end. What do you mean he doesn't have an end? You know, how does that work? Eternity is always, this, there's no time in eternity. You know, you can't, you can't mentally work, you know, really comprehend that. You see, so he couldn't, he's too big and mysterious to really understand. But that's why, but he loved fatherhood. He wanted to be a father. And the only way he could fully express that was to become a son of man, become one of us. Amen. Amen. Because if your father, if you never knew your father, how do you really know what a father is? Amen. You can read about it. You can kind of, you know, read stories and things. But until you experience a father being a father to you, Amen. then you know, what fa you know what it means to have a dad. Yeah. It's the same thing with God. You know, even David, I think he said, we re you know, read one of those Psalms, he's my father. But he didn't, he, didn't, he, doesn't, he didn't know it like we know. Amen? Because that was before Calvary. Yep. And so, he had to become one of us that he could express. He loved fatherhood for he was a father. The only way he could do it was express it, was to become a son of man. So he did that that we could understand him. But he also became flesh that he could understand us better. Yep. Because we understand it's like learning anything. You can know all the theory behind it, but when you do it, it's, when you experience it, it's a whole different thing. So I said like driving a car, you can know everything about the car, but when you sit in the driver's seat, you turn the ignition, you put on your seatbelt, and you pull out for that first drive, it's very different. It's very different. And so God, He knows all things, but there's a big but he had to experience what it was like. That's what it says in Hebrews, that he took on, he didn't take on the nature of angels, but he took on the flesh and blood of us, that he could be a merciful and faithful high priest, that he could understand you and understand the infirmity of this flesh, that he could relate to you. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'm so glad he did. Amen. Now, Brother Bram says in the, um, in the sermon, the mighty God unveiled before us in 64, he says, I was reading a story some years ago. And in the story, it said a great noble king. He says, I forget the name of him just now. I wasn't thinking about the story. It was perhaps fiction. But it leads us to a point that gives us background on what we want to say. Remember, his sermon is the mighty God unveiled before us. This king, he was such a noble king and such a great lover of his subjects. Till one day before his guard and his royalty, he said, today... You see me for your last time for many years. And his guard and his noble said to him, Good king, why do you say that? Are you going to a foreign country somewhere to become an alien? He said, No, I'm staying right here. He said, I'm going out amongst my subjects. I'm going to become a peasant. I'm going to cut wood with the wood chopper. I'm going to till the ground with the toiler. I'm going to prune the vines with those who prune the vine. I'm going to be one of them in order to get better acquainted with what they're doing. And I love them, and I want to be more acquainted with them personally. They won't know me, but yet I want to be acquainted with them in that way. And the next morning when his delegates and all of his people seen him, or the ones that was in the palace, take off his crown, lay it on the seat, the throne, take his robe off, put on peasant clothes, walk out amongst the common people. Now in that little story we find then about God. They said to the king, King, we want you, we love you, we want you to remain king. But he wanted be, to become one of them, to know them better. And they'd know him better, what he really was. It would display to them what he really was. And that's what God did. He changed himself from Jehovah God to become one of us, that he might suffer, he might taste death. He might know what the sting of death was and to take the penal penalty of death upon himself. He laid aside his crown and his robe and became one of us. He washed feet with the lowly. He dwelt in the tents with the poor. He slept in the woods and in the streets with those who are underprivileged. He became one of us that he might understand us better and that we might understand him better. Amen. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Last time I was up in New Guinea, you know, uh, you know, I talked about that. 
I said, how Jesus said, foxes have dens, birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And these are people, this is the poorest region of the country in its third world. And they could see Jesus became poorer than them because they had homes, they had food, they had a village, they had, he didn't have these things. The great King of Glory became poorer than the poor. Hallelujah. That's how great, that's how great, God is so great because he can make himself so little. Amen. That's what makes him great. Amen. That we might understand it. So he might understand us better and we might understand him better. But now we see in that form now, he began to demonstrate everything Adam did before the fall. So man before the fall, as I said, had dominion over the creation by the spoken word because the second Adam demonstrated everything the first Adam lost. So he spoke to the storm and nature obeyed him. He said, peace be still, as we sang this morning. And, and the storm had to be still. Yeah. He cursed a fig tree in Mark 11, showing that he is Lord over everything. He went to a funeral. Every funeral he came across, it never stayed a funeral. Amen. Amen. I mean, Lazarus didn't stay dead in the tomb. Amen. The, you know, you know, the um, lady's you know, son that was being carried out to be buried, Jesus intersected that funeral and the boy didn't stay dead. Glory. I mean, Dryas' daughter didn't stay dead. Amen. I mean, there was never a funeral that Jesus went to and it stayed a funeral. Hallelujah. Amen. He multiplied the bread and the fish. Amen. Because showing he is the very creator. Amen. Hallelujah. He fed thousands showing that he is the creator. Sickness had to obey him. The kingdom of hell had to obey him. Death couldn't hold him. Amen. Amen. He, he demonstrated dominion over everything that could, be, could have dominion over. Amen. Amen. He defeated everything. Yes. Hell, death and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was demonstrating, you know, but the very fact that he had, he, he took control of nature from Satan that was squatting. Yeah. I mean, in the storms and in everything, he took dominion over these things. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus would say in Matthew 28, 18, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. But then he would tell his disciples to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, baptizing them, teaching them all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lie with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And we know the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But so now, here was, here was the second Adam. Remember the first Adam was told, had dominion. Yes. Subdue it. Yes. Take dominion over the earth. And then now here comes the second Adam. Yes. Hallelujah. And, he, and he's actually, the body he was in was part of the creation. Amen. The earth was cursed. And God put on cursed earth. Amen. Sure, he is virgin born. But the very, his body, he suffered infirmities. He was sick like we get sick. Yeah. I mean, he was tempted like, I'm tempted on all points. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you know, many times we think that we're the only one who's gone through these things. Mm. Jesus did it all. Mm. Amen. I mean, he was suffered on all points. Amen. I mean, he was tempted on all points, Amen. yet without sin. Amen. So he understands what it's like to be, to be pressured to conform. As a young child, as an adult, yeah. finding his way in life. He knows what it's like because he's been there. Amen. Hallelujah. And then so, and then, and then Brother Bram says in the future home, he says, when Jesus was baptized on the river Jordan and the voice spake out from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. God was basically saying, this is my piece of the earth that I'm going to use to redeem the rest of the earth. Yeah. Amen. And so that was the commission Jesus had, remember, the increase of his government. What's, he's going to have dominion. He's going to subdue this creation. Mm. And then he calls his disciples that his work would continue. Mm. Amen. Because their, their, um, their ministry was a continuation of his ministry. Mm. But instead of being in one man, he is now in a many-membered body. Yep. And Jesus, when he was on earth, he cast out the devil wherever he found him. He set the captives free. Amen. He opened the eyes of the blind. Amen. He set at liberty those that are, you know, chained. Amen. Amen. And then he commissioned his church to do the same thing. Amen. Because the devil is a squatter. We understand. Amen. He is a squatter in this earth. Amen. But we have the privilege. Amen. Amen. By the anointing of God Amen. to cast out Satan wherever we find him. Amen. 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 To take this earth under dominion. Amen. 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 This, 
That's, that's the right, that's the preaching of the gospel. Amen. That's the living of this word. Amen. Amen. It's not just me standing here preaching the gospel. Amen. You preach a sermon every day. Amen. Amen. Your life preaches louder than your words. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. So you go and you, you create an atmosphere around you. Amen. Amen. And then when you really meet people, you say, Lord, open their eyes. Amen. Set them free. Amen. Because Amen. I see a life. I trust they do. Amen. And so the, so the commission given to the church was subdue this creation. Have dominion. Expand the borders of the kingdom. Right. Amen. That's the, that's the reason we're here, friends. Amen. We're not here just to have church and, oh, yeah, we believe in a prophet, whatever more. But the same God, Amen. that same anointing that was on Adam, yep. amen, that was on the second Adam, amen. is now in the second Eve, Hallelujah. is in you and I. Amen. amen. The same one in the book of Acts is present among us. Amen. And that's why amen. it says in Mark 16, he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs... And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm. Now, it's, uh, now you're going to demonstrate what I've done. Remember, he cast out legion, thousands of devils out of that one man. Mm. Mary Magdalene had seven devils in her. Mm. You know, what was all the sicknesses that he healed? He cast out, you know, Brother Brown says, what is cancer? Mm. It's a demon spirit now perverting cells in a body. Amen. Right. Amen. And the life has to be driven out of it. What's a virus? It's a life. I oh, say, well, it's a bunch. You know, you can see the biochemical mechanism of how a virus spreads. It's still a life. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's why I pray God kill the life out of the thing. Right. Then let the body heal itself. And then now, so he says now, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll follow you. Just walk with God. Amen. Remember, this is not a checklist. God will vindicate your life. And whatever degree he wants to do it, he's going to do it. Amen. 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 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Amen. Who's asked for healing? Amen. Who's prayed for someone who's sick? Amen. What's happened? A devil's been cast out. Amen. Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Who's done? Who's seen that happen? Amen. They shall recover. Amen. That's why you just got to have confidence. It doesn't matter if you don't see anything straight away. Remember, it's your faith. Sometimes God does it like this for you because He wants to build your faith. Other times He wants to see, do you have confidence in me? Amen. Do you have confidence in the prayer you have said? Amen. Amen. Oh, I don't see anything. Do you have confidence of you know, what you've prayed? Hallelujah. Amen. And then whatever the outcome is, you just say, praise the Lord. Because ultimately, remember, He's sovereign. Amen. Amen. He is sovereign in his choosing. You know, David, David and his first child to Bathsheba was, was sick to death. And he prayed on his face, asking that God would intercede and, and, and not take the child's life. Amen. So, so David wasn't just blasé about it. Because sometimes people get very blasé. Well, if it's God's will, it'll happen. If it's not, you know. But he, he prayed with everything was in him. Lord, his child, you're my rock. But then God took the child. What did he do? He washed himself. He went into the temple. He said, glory to God. Mm. You can read about it in the scripture. Amen. Because he knew God was in control of everything. Amen. You have to understand. That's not being, was it fatalistic or whatever. You have to understand. God is sovereign. He's not an errand boy. Amen. Amen. He's not our little mascot that we go and get and do things. God is not that way. Amen. A lot of people these days try to treat God like a mascot. Or an errand boy. Right. And what does that mean? That means the person's will is greater than, than God's will. That's right. yep. Amen. Yep. He is a sovereign God. Amen. He can cause us all to cease to exist if He wants to. He can do whatever He wants. Amen. Amen. He is sovereign. This is not a democracy. Yes. Amen. Us and God is not a democracy. He's our King and we love Him. Amen. And He loves us. Amen. And the reason we love Him is because He first loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now... And then he says in another place, he says, you shall tread on scorpions and serpents, they shall not harm you. It wasn't speaking, you know, literally you see people, they do snake dances and things. He's not talking about natural, natural things necessarily. He's talking about demon power. He says, you'll tread upon them. You'll have dominion. Amen. Amen. We're called to subdue these things, friends. Amen. Hallelujah. And then so the expansion, so the book of Acts is the kingdom expanding. Amen. Amen. It goes from 120 to 5,000, then however many more. And the kingdom expands. Amen. 
So I could say the garden expands like in Genesis 1. Subdue. Go subdue it. Replenish. Multiply upon the face of the earth. Subdue the creation. And that's what happened in the New Testament now. Because you see, real, to, to, to really, uh, what do you call it? Natural birth wasn't God's perfect will. Yeah, but, but God allowed it because this is how he knew it would happen. Yeah, God really ordained in the beginning that his children would be spoken into existence. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was God's perfect will. But God knew that we'd have to be born how we're born. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with that in marriage. You understand? Amen. Don't get all uh, Victorian about these things. Right. Amen. 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 Okay? But you see, God's perfect will was that we are to be spoken into existence. Mm. You understand? And so now, when, when, when someone is inspired to preach the word, and someone is born again, you understand? That is actually man multiplying and replenishing the earth. Because it's actually bringing to birth real sons and daughters of God. You understand? Hallelujah. That's why, that's why the Word must put on flesh in every generation. Amen. That's why there's ministry. That's why there's Sunday school. That's why you create an atmosphere. Remember, everyone has a part in the church. Everyone has a part in the church. You create an atmosphere, you pull on the gift that's in front of you, you sing and worship, create an atmosphere around you, you bring God down. Oh, no one ever notices me. The people in the pew is actually the most... You pray for the services. Brother Bram says that the reason I'm successful is people pray. And that's the reason his ministry was so successful, because people genuinely prayed to God, move, take that man and use him. Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't him. Remember, everything. You know... You, know, you look at an iceberg. They always say, oh, it's the tip of the iceberg that's out of the water. It's actually the underneath bits, the, actually the important part of the iceberg, the, the unseen part. Right. It's the same thing with a group of people. It's the unseen part that is the most important. Amen. And remember, we're not here to get uh, praise from man. Amen. I mean, sure, it's nice. Brother Bram says, if you don't want praise from man, you actually you're, you know, you know, you're lying because we like those things. So you go, oh, you say, oh, I appreciate that. It was, that was so nice. But at the end of the day, we want praise from God. Amen. 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 And so now that is, the, that is the order of the kingdom is to expand it and to bring this creation to subject, amen, to the word of God. And now it's the same thing with us. You say, well, how do you, now I'm going to bring this into your life because how do you bring things subject? Yeah. Amen. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, it says this, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So there comes a time, remember before this, says Michael and his angels fought with Lucifer or the dragon and his angels, and the enemy was cast down to the earth. But he says, so this is not, the ones that overcame him, it's not speaking about angels. Because there's no blood for angels, there's only blood for men and women, you understand. So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. So this scripture must become lived out. Now I'm going to try and wrap this up, I see, I see that. That thing on the wall moves. They see, but we we are here, amen, to live out the scripture. Because this salvation that he's speaking about is actually full redemption coming. I mean, because Satan is cast out upon the earth in the end time. And as the bride goes up, Satan comes down. And we're seeing that right now. I mean, because we're ascending. We're ascending. The bride is coming to her position. And as the bride comes to her position, Satan is cast out. Hallelujah. You see, the mechanics is all there for his last ride. Yeah. I mean, the pale horses, you know, all of his mechanics are there. You see this last pope, everyone, you know, it's like a day-night change. Yeah. Everyone hated the church. He comes in. Oh, he's so wonderful. Yeah. You know, oh, we can't get enough of him. Why? Because the mechanics are here. Yeah. And I'll say this. If he's not the last one, there'll be someone in the office that will fulfill it. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm saying the mechanics are all there. Yeah. Amen, for, for Satan to become incarnate in a man. 
And that's because we're ascending. That's why he's falling. Amen. The devil now. Amen. So these people, we, the bride in this day overcomes him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The revelation of who he is, what he did for us. Amen. He's our rock. And by the word of their testimony. As I said at the very beginning, you have to speak. Amen. Amen. If the first Adam took dominion, amen, if he had dominion over creation by the spoken word, and that same anointing that was on him was in the second Adam, amen, the fullness of God had bodily was in Christ Jesus our Lord, and he had dominion by speaking, amen, and that same anointing is now upon the bride of Christ, hallelujah, then what happens now is you have to speak, amen, the word, words of your testimony, and that is not only your experience, but this is your testimony. Amen. That's why don't confess negative things. Mm. Amen. Amen. You may say, I need prayer. Saying you need prayer is not negative. Mm. Actually saying, I want to join forces. Mm. I want to drive this thing out. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm going through a rough patch. That's not negative. Say, fight me in this battle. Amen. I, was so, I was so moved just thinking about, you know, there's, there was the brothers in Japan and, you know, people we prayed for. You know, people who know the prayer meeting, I think, we're with them. Amen. We're with the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. They may never know us or meet us. What well, doesn't matter, but we're with them. Amen. Hallelujah, because we're not divided. Amen. 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 Around the world, there's a body moving Amen. under the same inspiration that, you know, the same God that's in us is in them. That's why, you know, that's why I always pray, Lord, let them know we're with them, <laughs> that there's people praying. Amen. Hallelujah. But, you know, so there's nothing wrong with those things, and we should. It doesn't show we can faith, we're just in a battle. That's right. Amen. So you should say, yeah, help, you know, pray for me. I'm going through something. Yeah. But a negative confession is, you know, is, is basically denying what the Lord has done. Mm. You know, because you get down, you get weary, you say, is God really real? Is this really happening? You know, don't go down that road. Mm. I talk, you know, I say it's like a hamster wheel. Don't get on that hamster wheel. Because you don't get anywhere. You just get tired. Amen. 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 David, both David and Paul, they knew that God was their rock. Yes. Amen. And whatever came their way, they knew God was able. Amen. 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 You say, well, what about praying for a believer, but that, say, a cancer or something takes their life? Well, that was God's ordained way for them to go. And remember, as soon as they leave that body, to their glorified body, amen, that cancer is defeated. Amen. amen, because that cancer was only a vehicle for God getting to go to that place. You understand? Amen. But if God heals them, praise the Lord. Whatever God wants to do. Is that okay? You understand? It's not a defeat. It's only a defeat if people die in unbelief. But if someone dies in faith, that's a victory. Amen. And that's why the victory is not your circumstance. The victory is, are you standing upon the rock? Amen. And do you have confidence in your rock? Amen. Right. Amen. That's the main thing. Because if you know in whom you have believed, like Paul said, mm. amen, nothing will move you. Amen. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Amen. And a good builder doesn't let his building come off its foundation. Amen. Now, we have to speak. Now, Brother Bram says, I don't have the quote on me, but it says, if someone is anointed and they're speaking under inspiration, it's the same as deity speaking. Every mountain has to move. Amen. Nothing can stand before that man Hallelujah. or woman. Amen. Amen. Because if, if it's not me speaking or me praying, think about you as well. If you're anointed to, to, to pray or to speak something, that's not you speaking. Yes. That's deity speaking. Yes. Right. And nothing can stand before that kind of person. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why, that's why now, when you have a confession, if you're inspired, something grips your heart, I'm going to get well, or something's going to turn out right, and you speak it out, then actually your situation comes subject to your testimony. Amen. And, I, Amen. and I'll show you that in the scripture. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. Because God's looking for a response. Remember, Adam, Jesus, spoken word, everything was under their dominion. The same God is in you. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. You've got to speak to your mountain. 
Amen. It may not be a literal mountain. It could be sickness. It could be trouble in the family, whatever it is. You've got to speak to your mountain. The enemy may, may be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. You've got to speak to your enemy. Don't cower. Don't cow to the devil. Now, there's a story. I won't read it, but I'll just, I'll just paraphrase it quickly. It's in, Behold, a greater than, greater than all of them is here in, in, in 62. And he speaks of a blind man who, who comes, into the, comes into the prayer line. And this blind man was a Catholic. And he comes up. Brother Bram sees a vision over him that, that he can see. And he prays for him. He says, Thus saith the Lord, you're healed. And he goes off. But then he comes back into the prayer line again. And then, and then, um, and then, and then the guy says to Brother Bram, I thought you said I was healed. And then, the, and then Brother Bram says to him, I thought you said you believed. He says, he says just, just, just go on your way, thanking God you can see. Yeah. This guy's blind. He's selling pencils on the roadside. All these things. And he says, praise the Lord, I'm healed. And selling papers, extra, extra. I can see. The Lord's healed me. Hallelujah. People started to make fun of him. Two weeks later, he's sitting in a barber's. So you remember, you've got to speak it until you believe it. Amen. You understand? Speak it until it anchors down here. Yeah. yeah. And so he's sitting in a barber's chair, stone blind. And then the barber's giving him a shave, starts to make fun of him. I thought you said, you know, you're healed. You're down this meeting. And then he, he says, yeah, praise the Lord, I'm healed. And his eyes came open. Hallelujah. And he ran down the street rejoicing. <laughs> it took a couple of weeks. You understand? But he spoke it. And eventually, his situation came subject to his confession. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. David and Goliath. Now, I'm just going to maybe mention this. and I'm sorry, time has got away. But David, when he came to Goliath, David didn't have a sword. You understand? But he is speaking. He is speaking now. And the situation of that outcome of that battle was the result of what he said. Amen. Because he said to he said to Goliath, I'm gonna cut your head off. Mm. He didn't have a sword. Mm. But he says, I'm gonna cut your head off this day. <laughs> Amen. And what happened? He took Goliath's sword and he cut his head off. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He killed, you know, he hit him with the stone and then he jumped on him, cut off his head with Goliath's own sword. And so what happened? What he said came to pass exactly as he said. Amen. And I believe because David was walking under the inspiration of God. Amen. Amen. Because they all believed, remember Israel there, they all believed that God was a God of war that could fight their battles. Amen. They all knew it mentally. But it took someone for it to anchor down in their heart. Amen. And when it anchored down in David's heart, nothing could move David. Amen. You understand? And then now he says this in works as faith expressed. He says, why David was no kind of match for him. Speaking of Goliath, with any kind of weapon, he was no match. That's man's shoulders. Speaking of Goliath, he says, was probably 10, 12 foot across. He's probably standing 14, 15 foot high, spear like a weaver's needle, probably 20 foot long, the blade on it, maybe four foot across. And a little David standing there with a little piece of leather, goat skin or sheepskin, and two pieces of, of string tied to it. Remember, that's a sling. But it was revealed to him. Revelation struck him. Amen. He said, God that took me out of the paws of the bear and out of the paws of the lion, how much more will he deliver that uncircumcised Philistine in my hand? Amen. His brothers, way more able to do it because they were fully grown men in armor. Way more able to do it. Saul, head and shoulders above his army. But you see, it wasn't revealed to them. He says, Amen. There it is. They believed it could be done. They believed that God could do it, but it wasn't revealed to them. It was revealed to David. Now, there's the difference right there. If it's absolutely revealed to you that God is going to heal you, you're going to get well. Amen. You're going to get it. I don't care what's wrong with you. What, what's the odds? It may be worse than David and Goliath, but if it's revealed to you. Yes. Amen. So if it's not in here, not because it excites you, but because it's anchored down in here. Because remember, he said his brothers knew it could be done. Saul knew it could be done, but it was revealed to David. Amen. And because it was revealed to David, he said, I'm going to cut your head off this day. Amen. He didn't care. He didn't have a sword. God had provided a sword. It just turned out to be Goliath's sword. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. So now we, we are called. To do the same thing. You understand? You have to speak. 
You have to speak to your situation. You understand? God has to come anoint you. Doesn't matter what age you are. David wasn't that old. You understand? But that whole battle was the outcome of the battles I said before. I trust this sinks in. It's because he spoke those words is why it happened that way. It happened exactly as David said. Yeah. Exactly as David said. And so you've got to. You know, I heard this testimony from, from Brother Tim Pruitt's church. There was a man there who wanted to go on this Japanese trip, but he had no money to do it. He wanted to go. He felt he felt wanted to go. But he had no money to do it. And so he goes and, and uh, he meets this other man he's never met before, not even a believer. And he began to tell him how, you know, you know, how they do mission work and he has a burden to go. And this guy said, I'm going to pay your trip. You know, you know I'm going to help fund it. And then, and then so he said, you know, should I make a check out to you or to the church? What should I do? And then he said, I'll just make it out to the church. And, you know, and he didn't see him after that. And then he goes, see, and then he goes to see Brother Tim. He says, you know, this, you know, I just had this meeting with this man. He says he's going to help donate for the trip. And then he says, I don't know. Yeah, but maybe he'll just give like $500 or something. And Brother Tim says, no. He's going to pay for your trip. And he's going to give us $10,000 to help for the rest of the missionary work. Hallelujah. And it happened exactly that way. Amen. Amen. That wasn't him speaking. You understand? But it happened, but the outcome was what happened came out of his mouth. You understand? Hallelujah. The same God there, and this was not that long ago. The same God there is the same God here. Hallelujah. He's still Jehovah Jireh. Now, I want to I just want to read one more scripture. Maybe if we could have some um, um, have the musicians come. Now, Paul, he was built upon the rock. And he said this. He says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Remember, the same God, the very same God in his life is in our lives. Yep, the same one. Not in a lesser capacity. Amen. The same God. Yes. But it's as if God, God has to call you personally mm. to whatever. It, it doesn't mean you have to be a missionary, to be a housewife, to be a worker, to be whatever it is. Hallelujah. You have to be called. You've got to know God's called you. Amen. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labor is more abundant and stripes above measure. I just want to say this. I just, it just came to mind. When Annalise, and I've told the story, hopefully I'll tell it right this time. When Annalise was tongue-tied and we prayed, I felt dead at the post. I said, Lord, before they go and do the operation, because they did an operation on her tongue. Before, they, before the surgeon cuts her tongue, may the, may the surgeon not find the tongue tie there. Amen. Christine is taking her to the surgery. Yeah? And then you see a bit of blood or something come out of her mouth. She, she's still happy and well. And then the surgeon goes to open her mouth. And tongue ties are very obvious, you can see, especially bad ones. And the surgeon says, there's no tongue tie here. Amen. 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 What happened? God. By what? That happened, because I said, before the surgeon cuts her tongue. Yes. Amen. You say, oh, that's overseas. That's why I felt to say this right now. One, not even conscious what it being saying, not even feeling anything. I said, before the surgeon cuts the tongue, may not even find a tongue tie. And it happened exactly that way. Amen. Amen. Whatever your move to believe for, lay claim on it. Amen. Amen. He says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a full I am more. And labor is more abundant and stripes above measure. And prisons more frequent and death and deaths oft. Of the Jews. Now, now this is this is his this is Paul's missionary journeys. Remember, he didn't live on a flowery bed of ease. And man is still the same. Yep. Of Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. And a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fast, fastings often, 
and cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the church. So he's got all this stuff, but he's got a burden that the work would go forward. Yeah. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which uh, concern my infirmities. But he said in Acts chapter 20, 24, but none of these things move me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Here was a man. That, that's a big list. Yeah. If you just really sit down and just think about it, it's very easy to read. Yeah. But you really got to think about everything he went through. Yeah. It says, but none of these things move me. Amen. Hello? Amen. Wow. He said, God is, I, I'd say, I, I'm not putting the words in his mouth, but I say, God is his rock. Mm-hmm. And he knew in whom he believed. And that's why he could be victorious. Okay. He yeah. said, a crown of life is laid up for me. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Amen. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because he knew God is his rock. And he, even in those circumstances... He'd speak the word, and everything would come under his dominion. Yep. Amen. How about you? This is not some lofty idea. This is what he did. This is what the second Adam did. This is what you're called to have. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid. Okay? We'll leave it there because time is gone. Amen. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. If anyone would like to have prayer, you're more than welcome to come. Gracious Father, Lord, we want to thank you that you're our rock. Lord, you're unmovable, unshakable. Father, in times of distress, we could just fall upon you. We thank you, you're our refuge. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you're the same God. Father, that was in the beginning when you gave the commission to your children to subdue the creation, have dominion over it. And Father, we know that, Lord, that in Isaiah 9, as I read, there'll be the increase of your government. And Father, we've seen the increase, Lord. We've seen your kingdom expand even in this day. Hallelujah. Father, just help us, O oh God, because, Lord, we may not be the Apostle Paul. We, not, we may not be King David or one of these mighty people of faith, men and women of faith, Lord, that we read about, but you are still the same, Jesus. Amen. And that's the one we put, Lord, you're the one we put confidence in. Amen. Father, I just pray if there's, if there's those here, Lord, who are shaking, who don't, who, who don't know about tomorrow. Father, may they, just, may they just know that they're built upon the rock. Amen. Father, may they know that all is well. And Father, I pray you'd give them the testimony like Paul. None of these things move me. Amen. Father, grant it for your glory. Lord, I just want to commit everyone here, those who may be streaming into your, into your, into your care. Father, may we not look to these five senses or our own ability, but may we just... May we just know that our God is our rock. We praise your mighty name for your great abundant grace upon us. Father, just help us, Lord, to believe all things. And Father, not to waver in our faith. And Father, I pray, Lord, you see the battles that we're going through. Lord, may it just anchor from our, may it just travel from our heads into our hearts. May it be revealed like it was to David. Father, in every situation, Lord, I just want to, Lord, just commit us into your hands. Have your way, Lord, I pray, please, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Can we we sing that song, Brother Isaac? Amen. Amen. Let's stand, shall we? Yeah.
Waves, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you will all be still. Peace. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Waves, you won't break me. Storm, you won't shake me. Jesus is here. Oh, ye tempest, you That song, um, I'm, I'm standing on the rock of ages. Oh no, um, in Christ abiding, I shall not be moved, just like a tree planted by the waters. This one. Amen. And also, Jaden seven today. <laughs> Amen. <Yeah>. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Jesus is my savior. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. In His love and favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the
That's your testimony this morning. Amen. God bless you, friends. You're dismissed in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We shall not be moved.
No, no, this one here. No, no, you're right. This one here is right. But who's got the who's the car driving the car? I thought it was a year subscription. Well, maybe it was my subscription. I don't know how long I got it for though. It was actually pretty dumb because half the songs were just the new songs. There weren't actually many old songs on this. I don't even know if I'm going to get it. But I didn't really find it. Yeah, okay, no, I didn't, I didn't really find it. It had a lot of new songs, just heaps of the new songs which we don't really play. Yeah, and the old ones I could just go onto, um, like, one of the... You can just pull them up and then put them into on, into on song that one. Awesome. Yeah, I'll throw a few curly songs at you, but you made you pick.